national attention focuses on Wisconsin's presidential primaries, the latest skirmish in the ranks of Democratic hopefuls. Squaring off are front-runner Senators Kennedy and Humphrey. 1,192,398 go to the polls, a new high for the state. Kennedy topped Humphrey by a margin of 106,000 votes. The analysts are still arguing over what it means. Many political old pros discount the importance of primaries altogether, but all agree the Democratic race is in full cry. The GOP, meanwhile, with its nominee apparently a settled matter, is concentrating on building party enthusiasm. Party notables from all over the country happily chomp away on box meals at the Republican Women's National Conference in Washington, with Ike himself on hand. In his address to 7,000 partisans here, Ike delivered a rousing endorsement of Vice President Nixon and a forceful attack on critics of his defense policies. From here on, the presidential fever will mount steadily, the only prediction to come from this quarter. At the Pantages Theater, it's Hollywood's big night, the 32nd annual Oscar Awards, with a dazzling crowd of Dundon's great names packing the house, and the attention of the nation focused on the ceremonies. Janet Lee and Tony Curtis jointly named the nominees and winner of the award for the best story and screenplay. For a wild strawberry, and the winner is... Story by Russell Rouse and Clarence Green. Screenplay by Stanley Shapiro and Maurice Richman. Pillow Talk. Susan Hayward announces the award for Best Actor. Paul Muni, The Last Angry Man, and Jane Stewart, Anatomy of a Murder. Charlton Heston, Ben Hur. Rock Hudson Belong names nominees and winner of the award for Best Actress. And Elizabeth Taylor for Suddenly Last Summer. Come on, Signore, run with the cops! <laughs> 